In Magic, there are a lot of instants and sorceries that allow you to choose one or more of several different modes. The versatility and decision making involved has made these cards fan favorites. So today we're going to go over some of the best modal spells in the game. Starting us off at number 10, we have a Braid. This is an instant with a mana cost of 1 and 1 red that allows you to choose one of the following. Deal 3 damage to a target creature, or destroy an artifact. You can get both of these effects for cheaper, but what made a Braid stronger than most other options is its versatility. You see, just about every deck needs to play creature removal, because creatures are by far one of the most common types of threats in the game. Being able to deal with artifacts as well as creatures is a really nice upside. The versatility is a big part of why this card saw so much play back in its standard format. While a braid was very heavily played back in standard, it hasn't seen too much play outside of that. This is mostly due to just how efficient Lightning Bolt is. Bolt is an instant for one red that deals 3 damage to any target. Lightning Bolt is pretty solidly the best removal spell in red. A Braid's ability to destroy artifacts as well is really nice, but it can't compete with Bolt's efficiency. Decks in older formats do play a Braid every once in a while, but only if they're already running a full playset of Lightning Bolt. This is a common theme that will keep popping up on this list. In order to balance out the versatility of modal cards, they have to be less efficient, but efficiency is usually better than versatility. As a result, modal cards have to be really, really good to see any play. So while a Braid is a really strong card, it only sees sparing play because there are just better cards. And at number 9, we have Azet Charm. This is an instant with a mana cost of 1 blue and 1 red that allows you to choose one of the following. Counter a non-creature spell unless they pay 2, deal 2 damage to a creature, or draw 2 cards and discard 2. All three of Azet Charm's effects are useful, and what's better, they're all varied enough that you'll almost always find a spot where it can be put to work. The mode to draw and discard may seem a bit weak, as it's a minus one in card advantage, but there are some decks in the game that really like the effect. For example, in the card's current home is that Phoenix and Pioneer. This is a deck built around Arc Light Phoenix, a really strong creature that returns itself from the graveyard to the field if you cast enough instants and sorceries. This deck loves Azet Charm's ability to draw through its deck, as it's looking for as many ways as it can to discard its Phoenixes. Charm's ability to pull double duty by putting your Phoenix in the graveyard while also removing early threats and protecting your board from removal has made it an obvious choice for those decks. However, is that Charm is a little bit too weak for older formats that have better options, so its success stops at Pioneer. And at number 8, we have Kaya's Guile. This is an instant for 1, 1 white, and 1 black that allows you to choose two of the following. Your opponent sacrifices a creature, exile your opponent's graveyard, create a 1 1 white and black spirit creature token with flying, and you gain 4 life. It also has Entwine for 3, which allows you to pay an extra 3 mana when you cast it to choose all of its modes, instead of just 2 of them. Kaya's Guile is both flexible and scales well into the late game. These kinds of cards usually don't have the ability to get stronger if you pay extra mana for them. Unfortunately, in order to bounce this out, the modes on the card were made just a bit worse than usual. By far, the best mode on this card is to make your opponent sacrifice a creature, an effect usually priced at 2 mana. None of the other effects are really worth 1 mana, but getting them alongside forcing your opponent to sacrifice a creature makes the cost pretty reasonable. Despite the modes on this card being a bit disappointing, this card is a bit more than the sum of its parts. Exiling your opponent's graveyard is a great effect to have on a card, especially on a card that you can run in the main board. Graveyard decks are the most common kind of deck that you really want to have hate for, but they're just uncommon enough that you can't dedicate graveyard hate to try and stop them. So having it staple to another already good card really helps you during game one against those decks. Making a token and guinea life are also a good way to try and keep you alive against aggro decks. Kaya's Guile is nice enough that it isn't a stable or anything, but it has seen niche play in modern, and if it were legal in Pioneer or other weaker formats, there's a good chance it would be seen play there too. And at number 7, we have Boros Charm. This is an instant with a mana cost of 1 red and 1 white that allows you to choose one of the following. Deal 4 damage to a player or planeswalker, permanents you control get indestructible until the end of the turn, meaning they can't be destroyed by card effects or damage, or gives creature double strike until the end of turn, which basically lets it hit twice in combat. Unlike the rest of the cards on this list so far, where all the modes were used to some degree, Boros Charm is played for exactly one mode, dealing 4 damage to your opponent. You see, most good 1 mana burn spells can deal 3 damage to your opponent. Good 2 mana burn spells will usually deal 3 damage. Doing more than 3 damage to your opponent with a burn spell is actually really rare, and usually on bad cards. Getting 4 damage to your opponent for 1 card for only 2 mana isn't just a good deal, it's actually one of the best rates for this effect. So Boros Charm has seen a lot of playing burn decks and other aggro decks for its ability to deal a ton of damage to your opponent super quickly. And at number 6 we have Prismari Command. 
This is an instant with a mana cost of 1, 1 red, and 1 blue that allows you to choose two of the following. It deals 2 damage to any target, you draw 2 cards and then discard 2 cards, you create a treasure token, which is an artifact that you can tap and sacrifice to add 1 mana of any color, or you can destroy a target artifact. This is basically a bigger version of Izzet Charm. Two of its effects are basically the same, and the other two modes are also strong effects. Unlike Izzet Charm, however, this card can actually give you card advantage in some situations. If you're able to kill a creature and destroy an artifact, you'll destroy two of your opponent's cards while only having used one of your own. However, three mana is quite a lot for the effect. Like Azit Charm, Prismari Command sees play in arc like Phoenix decks and Pioneer. It also sees play in Crashing Footfalls decks in Modern. Footfalls is a sorcerer with no mana cost, so you can't cast it normally, that makes two 4-4 Rhinos with Trample, and has Suspend 4, which will allow you to cast the card for free in four turns. Rather than wait that long, decks simply use Cascade, a keyword that will let you cast a random card in your deck with a lower mana value when you cast the spell. So the decks simply don't run any cards that cost 1 or 2 mana, so all their cascade spells will hit their footfalls. Prismari Command is a nice addition to the deck, as it can help you catch up on turn 3 to help find your cascade spells. And at number 5, we have Collective Brutality. This is a sorcery with a mana cost of 1 and 1 black that has the ability Escalate, discard a card, which means you can choose any number of modes, but you have to discard a card for each mode you choose beyond the first. That allows you to choose one or more. Your opponent reveals their hand, and you choose an instant or sorcery, and they discard that card. Or target creature gets minus two, minus two until the end of your turn. Or your opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Unlike some of the previous cards of this list, Collective Brutality can't get you any card advantage. However, it's a pretty great tempo play if you can get use out of the multiple modes at once. For example, let's say you're on the play, and your opponent opens with a Ragavan. What you can do is, on your second turn, you cast Brutality to kill your opponent's creature, and you get a card out of their hand, at the cost of having to discard a second card from your hand. Sure, this doesn't get you any card advantage, but getting to get both of these effects for just two mana is really good. A lot of the time, players will do something similar by casting a removal spell and a discard spell on turn two. With Brutality, you can do the same thing, but you don't have to draw both of the one mana cards. This makes this line of play a whole lot more consistent. However, there are a few catches. Specifically, you need an opponent playing small, valuable creatures and a good number of instants and sorceries. As a result, Collective Brutality is mainly a sideboard card, but the amount of play it sees in formats like Modern easily gets it on this list. And at number 4, we have Kolagon's Command. This is an instant with a mana cost of 1, 1 black and 1 red, that lets you choose two of the following. Return a creature from your graveyard to your hand, target player discards a card, destroy an artifact, or deal 2 damage to any target. Kolagon's Command is a 2 for 1 machine. As long as you run a decent number of creatures, you'll always be able to get a card back from your graveyard and get a card out of your opponent's hand. Even better, there are tons of situations where you're able to clean up creatures off your opponent's board while getting another piece of action back. It's also one of the rare cards that allows you to force your opponent to discard at instant speed, which has some pretty serious implications. You see, players actually get priority during the draw step before the main phase, where you can play sorcery speed cards. So if your opponent is empty-handed and you have Kologarn's Command in hand, you can force them to discard the card they drew for a turn before they have a chance to play it, unless they happen to draw an instant speed spell. Back in Standard, this saw play alongside Soulfire Grandmaster, which had the ability where you could pay 2 and 2 blue slash red hybrid mana to make it so the next instant or sorcerer you cast this turn is returned to your hand instead of going to your graveyard. With both of these cards, you could lock your opponent out of drawing cards once you got to 7 mana. This combo was strong, but slow enough that it was more of a backup plan than anything and this specific interaction hasn't seen play in older formats. Today, Kolagon's Command sees play in black-red mid-range decks in Modern as a value piece. And at number 3, we have Archmage's Charm. This is an instant with a mana cost of 3 blue that allows you to choose one of the following. Counter a target spell, draw 2 cards, or gain control of a non-land permanent with a mana value of 1 or less. This is a spell that helps control and mid-range decks cover a lot of bases. Being a counter spell and a draw spell means that you can hold up your mana and your opponent's turn to have access to counter magic. And if you don't end up needing to counter anything, you can simply use it to draw cards. Whereas with other counter spells, you wouldn't be able to spend your mana on anything worthwhile. The best mode on the card, however, is the ability to steal a card from your opponent. There are tons of extremely powerful one drops in modern, so the ability to steal such a strong threat for only 3 mana, at instant speed no less, means that Archmage's Charm can be a complete blowout in certain situations. Threads of Disloyalty is an aura with a mana cost of 1 and 2 blue that allows you to steal a creature with a mana value of 2 or less, as long as the enchantment stays on the board. Threads is a pretty good card, and one of the cheapest ways to steal an opponent's card in the game. Charm has multiple upsides compared to Threads, being instant speed and being able to steal cards of multiple card types. Getting such a strong effect on a card that also has multiple other uses is such a great deal that the card has become a staple in blue decks in Modern. And at number 2, we have Pyroblast. 
This is an instant with a mana cost of 1 red that allows you to either destroy a blue permanent or counter a blue spell. We should quickly mention Red Elemental Blast, a card that's identical to Pyroblast outside of its wording, which has very few implications. Like Boros Charm, this is a modal spell that's just really good at doing one thing, rather than being a flexible spell for multiple situations. The mode that makes this card good is the ability to counter blue spells. You see, counter spells are pretty exclusively a part of blue's color pie, and counter spells in any other color are extremely good due to their rarity. Being able to counter spells is great, even if it's restricted to a single color. In fact, countering blue cards is the most important color to be able to counter. Because blue is the only color that gets counter spells, in order to fight against them, you have to use spells that can't be countered, or that make your other cards uncounterable. However, if you have a counter spell of your own, you can simply counter their counter spell to protect your play. Not only does this allow you to play whatever cards you want, rather than cards specifically to get around counter spells, but you can also use your Pyroblast offensively to stop your opponent's plays, as long as they're blue cards. The ability to counter blue spells is so much better than countering other colors of spells that the inverse of this card, Blue Elemental Blast, sees way, way less play, despite being just as efficient. And despite how powerful this card is, it hasn't had quite the effect on the formats that the number one card in this list has. And at number one, we have Cryptic Command. This is an instant with a mana cost of one in three blue that allows you to choose two of the following. Counter a spell, bounce a permanent, tap all of your opponent's creatures, or draw a card. This card is extremely powerful and versatile. This card is so powerful that control decks in Modern have been fairly reliant on it for a long time. It's also why Mystic Sanctuary is banned in Modern. Sanctuary is a land that allows you to put an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library when it enters the battlefield if you have at least three other lands in play. What people do is if they have two cryptics in a sanctuary is use their cryptics to tap down their opponent's creatures so they can't attack, then use sanctuary to put it back on top of their deck, and then use the second command to bounce their sanctuary back to their hand. This would allow them to draw another cryptic command and then play their sanctuary to put their other command back on top of their deck, putting them back in the same position again. This loop allows them to tap all of their opponent's creatures every single turn, making it impossible for them to die to creature damage. Now, Cryptic is ultimately a weaker card than Pyroblast, but the impact it has had on the modern metagame by making control decks viable for years is far greater than any other modal cards in the game, and for that reason, it takes the top spot on this list. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any of the cards you think we missed, or do you have any ideas for future videos just like this one? If so, let us know down in the comments.